Hey everyone, welcome back to The Road to Superman. This is episode 40, and coincidentally, we are just about to, or have already hit at the time of watching, 40,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for the support, it genuinely means so much to me, and I will have a special video releasing soon to celebrate 40,000 subscribers. But now, let's talk about Superman. There is no denying that since the cast and crew left Cleveland, Ohio, the set photos have dried up. It's a good and bad thing as the less photos we see, the less we know about the movie, but at the same time it also means we have little Superman news to talk about. But they are now at the Cincinnati Union Terminal, which was the building that the Hall of Justice was inspired by. So we know the Hall of Justice will be in the movie. But let's start with Gunn saying goodbye to Cleveland. He said, Cleveland, today we are leaving you after six amazing weeks of shooting. From the moment we first came here on a scout a tad less than a year ago and Terminal Tower was lit up with colours of Superman, I knew you were a special place. I would walk down your streets and someone would stop me and tell me how grateful they were we were shooting in their city. Not once, not twice, but dozens of times. The wonderful background actors on the film were always so fun and funny and they clapped after takes, something that reminded us Hollywood cinema why we make movies in the first place. The pride you feel in being where Jerry and Joe first created Superman was invigorating. You exemplify his spirit. But just as much, it's the pride you have in your community, your hometown, your radio stations and restaurants and gathering places that touched me. Every city would be so lucky to have people that loved their city as much as you. You simply couldn't have been more wonderful, kind or accommodating to me and and our performers and crew. Thank you a thousand times over for being our friends and partners on this film. Much love to you all. And that's a really lovely message from Gunn. He really does appreciate the love he and his cast and crew were getting from the people of Cleveland, and he also understands the importance of Cleveland to Superman. He was also answering questions on Instagram and threads and said this about the city. Cleveland was chosen for the wonderful architecture that worked well for Metropolis. That Superman was created there was gravy. And he's so right, the architecture in Cleveland is not only beautiful, but also ideal for Metropolis. You search up Metropolis on the internet, and these are the visuals you get. A stunning city filled with personality, and it really is supposed to stand out from other cities. And Cleveland does exactly that, so it works perfectly within the aesthetic James Gunn is going for. He also confirms that Peacemaker follows the events from Superman, and I wonder if this has anything to do with Rick Flagg Sr., as he will appear in Creature Commandos, Superman and Peacemaker Season 2. So I assume the connection between Superman and Peacemaker is Rick Flagg, and something happens in Superman that Peacemaker needs to deal with. And DC Film News asked Gunn, how do you feel that Superman is almost done filming? And Gunn responded with, fulfilled but tired. But filming isn't over yet, saying we are not done shooting, still a couple of weeks left. Just done shooting in Cleveland, and yeah, it's a long shoot, but we're getting close. And unfortunately, we won't get a teaser at San Diego Comic Con this year, as they still will be shooting, and I actually hope we don't see any teasers until Super Bowl in February next year. But now, let's go on to the Hall of Justice. Mr. Terrific has been the only hero spotted on set, but that is most likely because it is so easy to miss them entering the building. Apparently, they are only filming within the building, and in the tunnel periodically, and this is definitely for the Hall of Justice scenes. There is no way on earth they would include the building that the Hall of Justice was inspired by if it wasn't for the Hall of Justice. That would just be cruel. Now I mentioned in the previous episode that I think the Hall of Justice will be there for the Justice League International, and Mr. Terrific being a part of these scenes only strengthens my theory on that. I believe they will be there trying to help defeat the Engineer and the Man in Black, who I think is Ultraman, or I think they are trying to recruit him for their group. Now surprisingly, a new photo has been released from the Superman set in Norway. Remember that? Right at the beginning of March, they were filming scenes in Norway for the Fortress of Solitude, and it now has been confirmed that not only was Superman and the Engineer there, but also Eve Teschmacher, who is Lex Luthor's personal assistant. Now we didn't know she was there too until now, and so 
my theory that Superman maybe takes the engineer to the fortress to help her is most likely wrong. Based on this new photo, I think the engineer and Eve somehow follow Superman to the fortress so that Lex Luthor knows where Superman is hanging his cape. And if you know my spoiler theory, then you will understand what I mean when I say I think Lex has a particular interest in the technology within the fortress. And so that is why I think he has sent the engineer and Eve to go follow Superman. But now let's move on to the aspect ratio for Superman. Someone asked Gunn, is it true you're so into taller aspect ratios like 1.9 to 1 and 1.78 to 1 now because you keep hiring mammoth sized actors and don't want their heads cut off by the frame. And Gunn responded with, haha, sure, David wouldn't fit in 2.35. So we will be having a taller aspect ratio for the movie. Now I have mixed feelings on this. I like the 2.35 look of movies, but sometimes the taller aspect ratios are needed for the aesthetic of the movie and overall framing of an actor. Personally, for truly cinematic films, most of the time I would want it to be in true 2.35. And if you want more in frame, then step back a bit and use a different focal length. Whilst I think the larger ratio looks great for big opening shots like this one in Guardians 3, I felt that in some dialogue moments within that film, it felt like I was having a TV show experience rather than a cinematic experience due to the aspect ratio choice. However, Gunn is quite good at mixing aspect ratios together for certain scenes, and if he can do that seamlessly in Superman, then that is the best of both worlds. My only issue is when they crop a shot. And by that I mean when the standard version is in 2.35 and the IMAX version is in 1.9 to 1. That is them actively cropping what you see in the frame, and so when that is happening, I don't like them cropping down to the 2.35 because you're missing some of the shot. I like 2.35 when they use an anamorphic lens to get a more cinematic and wide look to those shots and maybe crop the sides of it. So instead of them cropping the top and bottom to make that aspect ratio, they are actually just filming in that aspect ratio. So if Gunn is using a spherical lens, then I'm happy with the taller aspect ratio as we are seeing everything in frame. But I do love a widescreen look that an anamorphic lens gets you. Anyway, too much about aspect ratios. Let's get back to Superman. An act by the name of Fahim Fazli has talked about his role in the movie, saying, Dear James Gunn, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for giving me the opportunity to be the Jahan Purian villager leader. I was very impressed by your directing and your kindness, not only to me, but the whole cast and crew, including the almost thousand extras. When I saw your energy, I was very impressed, and I am very grateful to be part of your movie. Being the first Afghan-born American actor in Hollywood in a Superman film is a milestone that has never happened before. Thank you, you are the best director in Hollywood and a beautiful human being. So he is very grateful for being a part of the movie and I searched up what does Jahan Purian mean and it took me to a DC database that said Jahan Purians are a powerful extraterrestrial species originated from the destroyed planet Jahanpur. In the histories of both Earth-38 and Earth Prime, most of the Jahan Purians who survived Johanpur's destruction decided to settle on Earth. Apologies if I have butchered that name. But so yet again, another piece of world building going on in Superman that maybe Superman interacts with in the early stages of the movie. Let me know your theories on that in the comments below. But that is all for today's episode of The Road to Superman. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you never miss an episode. I hope to see you here again soon. So until then, have a great day. Bye.